Yep, you actually have key track for the filters. So the uh, the filter cutoff will track the, uh, the the note you're playing. So I'm just going to activate that feature, pull down on the cutoff. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Joko Pak, I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. So if this video feels a bit unscripted and rough around the edges, it's because it is. Um, I decided to record this on a whim, basically. Um, I'm on vacation and I shouldn't be making any videos right now, but I just finished uh, working on this uh, very awesome, fully featured MIDI controller template thing for MIDI Designer Pro 2. I basically built this in order to get full access to all of the hidden features, uh, including some of the main features inside Unosynth here by IK Multimedia. So um, there are some, uh, th there's a lot of elements on here already, and it's very easy to go through the menu and actually work the synthesizer. Uh, the menu diving, it's not that bad. But as I said, there are some features that you can't access unless you're using a MIDI protocol. And that's why I'm using MIDI Designer Pro here to build this this beautiful thing where I've got control of basically everything inside the synthesizer except from a few things that probably they're just not accessible at all through MIDI. Now the first thing we're going to have a look at the waveform selection can actually be modulated with the LFO and so I'll put two uh, knobs here for doing exactly that. Now the coolest thing is actually the uh, pulse width modulation that you can do also with the LFO. And it gets interesting when you're using multiple oscillators. <laughs> Let's detune them. Another thing that I just had to do was uh, to break out all of the uh, various features that you normally control with knobs um, into button type feature, uh, button type interfaces instead. Like when you switch out the filter mode, you actually go to the filter and then you have the mode item there and then you switch out the modes like this. So you got uh, the, the low pass, the uh, high pass and the, the uh, band pass. Right here I can do the same thing, only I've got three buttons for it. which is really, really nice. Uh, as you can see, um, as I did earlier, I was controlling the different temp tempo rates with um, with buttons too. Uh, that's also something you normally do with, uh, with the knob. So when you get up to a certain point, then it starts getting into tempo locked uh, rates for the LFO. But I just wanted to be able to control it like this instead. It, it makes, it's just easier when you're doing stuff like dubstep or something like that. Um, of course, I've broken out all the normal stuff like uh, the uh, the level controls for both oscillators. Uh, the, the noise has its own level. <laughs> Um, and stuff like that. You actually have key track for the filters. So the uh, the filter cutoff will track the, uh, the, the note you're playing. So I'm just gonna activate that feature, pull down on the cutoff.
As you can hear, when I play higher, the uh, cutoff opens up, and when I play lower, the cutoff closes. That's a very nice feature to have, and that's also only accessible through the, uh, the MIDI protocol. Um, what's more on here? Oh, of course, as you can see, I've got uh, the filter envelope and the amplitude envelope right here, and they're not AD and AR. No, they're actually fully featured ADSR envelopes. And so on the interface, you only have attack and decay for the uh, for the filter envelope and for the amplitude envelope you only have attack and release but with midi you can access the full thing um what else do you have uh, oh of course the dive and scoop range so if i play this note let's see here i'm just gonna turn off the key tracking Uh, there's actually a way of controlling the uh, the depth of the dive and the depth of the scoop with some P uh, presets, um, the scoop and dive didn't do that much. Uh, and I think they're tied to some kind of an envelope. So I made controllers for that. So if we go to FX and scales, we can see the dive range here and the scoop range here. Um, as you can see, I've also broken out all of the different scales. One thing I did really want was knobs for the delay. I mean, the delay is accessible here. So if you want to um, increase the mix, you just press the mix and then you use the data entries here to raise or lower the mix, uh, mix uh, level. And then you have uh, the same thing for the time, but it's really not ideal to control it like that. So I made knobs for it instead. Not only can you use the LFOs to control the uh, waveform selector and um, pulse width, but you can also control the pulse width and the uh, waveform selector with the filter envelope. There's, there's even more stuff in here that you can't get. Um, stuff con uh, that are tied to the ARP and sequencer. So I'm just gonna switch over to this uh, view. Um, here I've got like an on-off button for the, sequ uh, for the arpeggiator. <laughs> And the cool thing is that we actually have a gate length here. And if we turn this off um, and we go to the sequencer instead, it gets really interesting because the sequencer actually has a swing feature. And not only that, I've, uh, as you can see, I've got the di directions mapped here, but I can also control the uh, step length, not the step length. Uh, I meant the amounts of steps that the uh, sequencer will play, so. Now I couldn't put a play or stop feature in here for the uh, sequencer, nor could I program this interface to make it possible for me to program the sequences uh, inside Unosynth through this interface. I I'm thinking that that interface, it's, it's not MIDI anyway, so it's not uh, really talking the same language as the MIDI protocol. It's probably some native language, but what is uh, accessible, uh, uh, the, the presets were actually accessible. Only I made a little mistake here when I made mine, because um, as you can see, I've got mine numbered from zero 
to 99 and inside Unosynth it's actually numbered from 1 to 100. Uh, so if I want preset number 34 I have to press 35 but uh, no wait now I thought no if I want 34 I have to press 33 yeah it's it's really confusing but uh, I don't if, if for me in order to, for me to change this I'd I'd have to go in and rename each of these buttons it took such a long time for me to even make this as you can see I also put two filter control pads in here so the one of them is controlling the cutoff uh, on the x-axis and and the resonance on the y-axis and this one down here is controlling the drive uh, up and down and the envelope amount sideways uh, which is a nice thing to have when you're performing so uh, when I use this and I want to jam around i keep this one open and then i i have like the arpeggiator uh, on here and i'll just um, play around with this <laughs> Now it's too bad that the swing feature doesn't work for the arpeggiator, it only works for the sequencer and the gate length is only here for the arpeggiator and not the sequencer. So that's, yeah, that's basically it. Are there any other features? There might be other features in here, but I haven't found them. But as you can see, what I've built here so far, it took me two days of constant building. I love doing nerdy stuff like this, but it took two days for me to build this thing. And if you want to download it, if you've got an iPad and you have a MIDI Designer Pro 2, or you want to buy MIDI Designer Pro 2, um, then you can go download this entire thing for free over at the MIDI Designer site. Um, I'll put a link down in the description to the post uh, in where I published this thing. Or you could build one yourself. Uh, what I've been doing is I've been using the manual and just going through the, uh, uh, the MIDI implementation. And I've also been using a MIDI monitor to see exactly what CC numbers and stuff that this thing is sending out when it comes to like the uh, LFO rate and stuff like that. That was a bit fiddly to make uh, for this thing. Uh, I will say though that that choosing presets through this selector is a bit slow but uh, if you don't go too quickly it's still doable but I'm not really happy with how this turned out and they're also numbered wrong uh, but it's a beautiful interface you've got it gives you full control of everything inside Unosynth including the hidden extra features that that just makes the synth engine so much more powerful so yeah uh, thank you so much for watching I'm gonna go continue my vacation now uh, I won't be working on any new videos for a while I, I have some uh, that I need to finish and put up on my channel so it's not like I'm gonna stop posting videos I've actually been on my vacation my, my vacation actually started like two weeks two weeks ago and I've still been posting videos but I kind of pre-recorded those I don't want to leave my viewers without something to watch just because uh, I'm free so yeah that's basically it if you liked this video even though it's full of mistakes and it's unscripted and stuff i feel really uncomfortable making videos like this uh, this feels more like something i would have done in a live stream um, any case if you felt helped by this video if you like this video then press the thumbs up and um, if you want to help in securing the future for this channel and everything i do then why not consider joining up on patreon if you don't want to do that i've got paypal if you don't want to do paypal go check out my tracks on bandcamp maybe buy one if you find some some someone something something you like um, and if you don't want to do any of that then just share my videos to anyone who might uh, be interested in in this as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Okay, let's just find the off one.